Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video. In this video, I will show you guys how you can make your own bench power supply using an old computer power supply. Why? Because these uh, bench power supplies tend to be very expensive. They seem like an easy hack, so let's get started. This is an old computer power supply, also known as an ATX power supply. It converts your 230 volts AC to 12 volts, 5 volts and 3.3 volts DC. This gets distributed between your processor, motherboard and peripherals. This power supply is rated at 250 watts and up to 21 amps on the 5 volt rail. This is enough amps for all my needs. This is a 20 pin connector for the motherboard. The newer power supplies come with a 24 pin connector instead. The yellow wires are 12 volts, the orange wires are 3.3 volts, the red wires are 5 volts and the black wires are ground wires. Once you plug the AC cord, the green wire on the 24 pin connector has to be grounded to switch the power supply on. And yes, the fans spin and we sure have a voltage. The 12 volt rail shows a voltage of around 10 volts. Although on the 12 volt rail it shows a voltage of around 10 volts. But when I put a small load, the voltages rise to about 11 volts. So with a small load, the voltages increase and are almost near their rated number. This is good enough, only the 12 volt rail has some undervolt issues. Now you could just cut these wires and solder some pins and use it as a bench power supply. But then if the power supply dies, you might have to repeat the whole process again. So I bought this extension cables. This increases the length and now I am not butchering the original connector on the power supply. Before cutting the wire, let's go make a proper enclosure and a front panel where I can get easy access on my desk. I had another dead power supply. I removed the internal circuitry, cleaned it and this looked like a perfect candidate for my enclosure. I cut the fan grill and later filed the sharp edges. I also covered it with this black vinyl and it looks classy on the table. I decided to go with these binding posts and these double row female headers as my access points. Next I used a thick cardboard piece and outlined the shape of the cutout and the screw holes. I went on to mark the spots for the binding posts, the voltmeter ammeter combo display and also the female headers. I drilled the holes and cut out the remaining spots and covered this with the vinyl and later mounted the binding posts, one for each voltage 12, 5 and 3.3 and the black one is the ground. I cut the female headers into smaller pieces and mounted three of them onto a PCB. I merged the bottom and the top rows of each of the header. The bottom row will be the ground and the top rows will be the respective voltages. I kept checking for any shorts while I was soldering. Soldered wires to the top rows and hot glue the whole thing. This way I can avoid any possibilities of those solder joints shorting out. Later also installed the voltmeter ammeter combo along with its accompanying binding posts. These will be used when I upgrade the power supply to a variable voltage one. I couldn't do it in this video as the bug boost converter did not arrive in time. We will cover the upgrade in one of the 2 minutes Tuesdays. I used these zipped tie mounts as the feet for the enclosure. Also added a layer of hot glue on them to remove the slipperiness. I later drilled a hole for the power supply switch which will short the green wire to the ground when turned on. I added some LED strips to the bottom which will act as indicator lights when the power supply turns on. The enclosure was almost done at this point. I cut the wires from the extension and segregated them into respective voltages. Note that the extension cable does not have proper color coding so be careful. If you want minus 12 volts, it is the blue wire on the connector. Next I removed the insulation from all the wires, twisted them into a single lead. I mounted these wires to the binding posts with the help of screws and also used heat shrink tubing along with some electrical tape to avoid shorts. I made another small cardboard panel where I attached an OLED display, a rotary encoder with an inbuilt button, a switch and also cut the spot where I will mount a potentiometer for the variable voltage control. So why the display and the rotary encoder? That's because I intend to use this as my IoT control hub along with my power supply. I secured both the panels using screws and the holes which already existed on the power supply. I mounted the power switch and soldered the respective wires. 
Later I went on to mount the computer power supply to the bottom of my table using a piece of MDF as a support. Made the connection, closed the enclosure and turned it on. Cross checked the voltages and everything checked out. And it was done for now. Now I can easily plug in my devices like my fume extractor, my LED cube and other things to the front panel. This also makes it easier to power my projects while testing. This enclosure will also get control circuitry for lighting and all sorts of other things for home automation and IoT. You might have noticed that I didn't use the other cables from the power supply. I have reserved them to power my IoT circuitry which I will install soon. If you're watching this, you have made it to the end of the video and I love you guys. And anyways, now you know how to convert a computer power supply into a bench power supply. That's it for this video. Tell me what you think about it in the comments below and see you in the next one. Also like, share and subscribe.